The astrology suggests, as Einstein said, God's not playing with dice. It's not random. There's an event that occurs, there's a whole system around it, and the stars are directly related to the karma that you have been handed from past lives. I don't think there's a mystery anymore, that there's a continuum. This is ancient science. We just dropped in for almost three hours yesterday, and I'm a believer now. I never thought I'd be here. That session changed my life. A really good astrology reading. You should finish going, I felt so understood. And now I get it. That's what astrology is for essentially is to help you fall in love with you so you can get on with the movie because mm -hmm. you can't get rid of you it doesn't go away but there's a lot of people listening to this who spend way too much time alone and they don't feel connected mostly to themselves and their own chart what are you doing here why did you incarnate what is the purpose of incarnation if not to evolve to right. continually wake up inside the dream and then play the role of the joy maker of the lover of the manifester of right. the artist you get to choose but we can't remember there is a 13 sign that was found, but that's not the one I'm talking about. Please. I've not gone public with this. Yes, please. This is new information. Well, Deborah, I anticipated starting this podcast saying, I don't believe in astrology because that's how I've spent most of my life. So I've heard. And I think one of the reasons is, is I've just never seen something that quite fit what you know, just the average amateur, I know your birth sign, I anticipate this, or I do a Google search and I see it and I'm like, yeah, look, I get a little bit of that, but like, it's much more complex than that. And so it's never really fit me. And I've also not understood the mechanism by which it would work. Although I did listen to a speech from Richard Tarnas mm. who explained that it was this co-arising in the cosmos. And so that opened my mind a little bit, but then to bring us to the present, we just dropped in for almost three hours yesterday, two and a half hours good, and I'm a believer now. I never thought I'd be here. And so we're starting from a different place than I anticipated, but uh, I'd love to just, first of all, say thank you for that session yesterday, because it wasn't just astrology, it was like deep shamanic work and working with the elements and... Uh, it was really beautiful, really, you know, life changing in many ways. So first of all, thank you. And, uh, excited to, you know, speak to those people that may be like me and be like, this is all a bunch of bullshit. This is all the Barnum effect and people trying to apply things that are general to something specific enough, reading the person and, mm -hmm. And then also go like a little deeper into some of the specifics and things that we've experienced. And that's our itinerary for it's the It's so day. funny because a true double Pisces fashion, I'm writing a book that will be coming out in a year in 13 languages. And the name of the book is, I don't believe in astrology. Yeah. <laughs> so you just nailed it. So that is what I respond to is there's so many people. And I understand the skeptics because I was once a skeptic. Like, how could it possibly be true? And make it really specific for me to your point so I can feel it and not just hear words words and jargon because so much of the new age has all these words we go through these memes and we scroll and we listen to all the but when it touches your heart and it's yeah. shamanic and it enters the body and there's a shift that takes place in a real concrete way that's the difference between talking about astrology and embodying astrology mm -hmm. yeah that's i think what it is and that's my it's my way of knowing like this is my epistemology how do i know what i know you know how do i like what's the process for me i have to feel it yes like it has to come inside my body yes. and i have to feel it and that was the road that we crossed yesterday and once i've crossed that road there's no coming back like after i felt god it's not like i don't know about god i mean right. i felt it this one time like oh no i know and then I'll feel it more times and more times, of course, right. to confirm it. But that's kind of the position that I'm in now. It's like, wow. And also, you know, there's interesting things that we explored, like me having no earth signs Zero. in my chart at all and still exhibiting and strong and manifesting a lot of earth qualities. Right? Yes, and so yes. I think that was one of the reasons that I was like, I don't know if I believe in this because there's complexities about myself that right. only with like the master's touch and i know you would you know any like any master you'd be like i'm just a student uh, blah 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 we get it <laughs> <laughs> but nonetheless that master's eye was able to like bring me deeper into the chart 
to help me understand. So the first book I wrote was called The Missing Element. And when you're missing an element, it doesn't mean you don't have it. It means that you already did in a past life. And this lifetime, they said, enough with that. If we gave you too much earth, think of what you would have been like <laughs> if they would have given you earth. So some people, my best friend owns a lumber yard. She has no earth in her chart, but yeah. she works around wood all day. So it doesn't mean when you're missing an element, you don't have it. It does mean it's a lesson. It's a teaching. Yeah. You've either come in with an advanced version or you're suffering and learning at the beginning level. So it's always extreme, but in your case, your earth element, I mean, I was in awe. I was writing it down, writing all the things that you've accomplished. I was like, this guy has no earth because God said, don't give him any more. <laughs> Just think of how worked out you would have been if you were a really grounded guy. <laughs> yeah. It's true, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, that's a very interesting place to put. All right, so we have a couple of things I want to talk about. One is I want to go through the elements and give people who don't understand how the elements you know, affect a person and what they really mean. I want to talk about that. And then I also want to take a step back because we just brought in this concept of reincarnation and part of the purpose of this, which is the learning different lessons throughout this life. And so, first of all, just to zoom out the furthest, like what is your thoughts and feelings about, and maybe known beliefs or just a gnosis about how our souls incarnate and what the purpose of this life I is. love that question. I knew, you know how when you do podcasts, people ask the same questions? I knew you weren't going to do that. <laughs> you started with my favorite question. I think there's a design, said the astrologer. The astrology suggests, as Einstein said, God's not playing with dice. It's not random. Uh -huh. There's an event that occurs. There's a whole system around it. And the stars are directly related to the karma that you have been handed from past lives. I don't think there's a mystery anymore that there's a continuum, that there's a spiral. That I mean, if we have to debate that, yeah. we're with the wrong audience. No, I mean, and, and, and it's been like con really conclusively shown in the University of Virginia's work on reincarnation, people, thousands of people who remember details of past yes, lives yes. that would be impossible unless there was a conti continuity of consciousness. Well, the easiest version is the Tibetans, because every time there's an incarnation of a Rinpoche, especially at the highest level, they tell their attendant where they're coming in their next life. And there's been films made and documents very clear that they know what their name will be, where they're going to be. And even the Dalai Lama yeah. is incarnated 13 times and tells his attendant, next lifetime I'm coming, I'll be raised in, name the city, tell them. It's crazy. So there's no mystery there. But the better question is, how does astrology dance yes. with the karma of the last lifetime. So all I can suggest, and I none of this is from concrete evidence, this is all my intuition, that there is a promise that gets made based on the chart, which I can look at yours and say, you promised this life you would do relationship. That mm. your area of expertise, Saturn's in Libra, so I can look at one indicator on the chart to give me uh, information about what was the agreement. And now I can't tell you how to go backwards and tell you what you did in past lives, but I can tell you in this lifetime that was your promise. Yeah. That you would rewrite and update the notion of the of matriarchy or what is that called? Marriage in mm -hmm. classical terms mm -hmm. that you were gonna and I know this is a controversial topic we addressed, mm -hmm. but that's part of your promise. And everyone has one. You can look at the chart and say, by looking at where Saturn is, what was the promise this person made? Now that's very simple astrology. I just simplified it. Right. And I make astrology simple because I'm answering the question you're asking. What are you doing here? Like, right. why did you incarnate? What is the purpose of incarnation if not to evolve, to right. continually wake up inside the dream, and then play the role of the joy maker, of the lover, of the manifester, of right. the artist, of the beauty? Like, you get to choose, but we can't remember. You know, what's interesting is, so that was a big piece that came out was that, you know, one of my soul's promises was to re-understand and reimagine relationship yeah. and you know really bring forth uh, the future of what love and relationship yeah might look like right like and i've i've felt that you know and what's interesting is i had a transmission with a very powerful medicine woman who went into a full trance and like made me bow my head she was in like full trance or in a medicine ceremony and i bowed my head and she like transmitted this journey of my soul's evolution. And what was very interesting is I saw all of these flashes of like lifetimes lived and it was like, but it, but it played out as almost like one story. And the story was, is that I was a lover and a bard and I was like a poet and a bard oh, and, a really? singer <laughs> and a lover. And then 
some bad people or bad dark forces of some sort came and they killed my love and like burned my village. And then I became a warrior. And then I became a warrior, but I was so filled with vengeance and wrath that I kept killing and killing and mm-hmm. killing until I became like a monster. Like that guy? Well, I mean, hopefully that guy was a noble, noble samurai, right. but, but I don't know. I didn't, I didn't see, I didn't see inside that armor, but he has dragons and a heart on there somewhere. So that's true. That, so maybe he was, maybe he was a good, maybe he was the one of the good ones, but the warrior type. So definitely the warrior, but I extended beyond. It was like, it wasn't just, I got the revenge for the killer of my, of my beloved. I kept chasing down and burning down all the villages of where he came. It was like that. Like I, it went dark and then the, the medicine woman just purged, just started vomiting. And I started getting nauseous, like purging that. And then I saw myself make the turn, recognize like this is too far. And then saw myself now in the reclamation of that lover but from this post-tragic lens of having gone through the journey. And so now, you know, seeing that, like, it's like, I still have a lot of that warrior in me. It's a part of my soul's path. And, but really it's about reclaiming the lover at a higher level. Wow. That makes so much sense in our conversation yesterday. Just the warrior's stance to go for extremes and to fight without knowing that he's fighting for love. Yeah. That's the confusion in a stress. That's Aries. You have a very strong first house, which is Aries, and it's the warrior, and he forgets why he's fighting. He yeah. gets so caught in the energy and the chi, and we all know people like this. They've got a temper, and they're show-offs, and they're loud, and they're big, and then you have to say, like, who are you showing off for until they realize it's for their soul to be the example of the warrior, the protector, the provider. Yeah, It's a real reframe. So I see you doing that with the male energies, rewriting the lover, Libra, opposite sign Aries with yeah. the strength of your character. Yeah. That was a funny assignment you'd picked. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, and I think the the beauty of it is cuz I can speak to the warrior because I've had a, I have enough of it in me where they can see like, oh, you know, Tatfama, see like I like I am that too. You know, yes. like you and yes. I like I see enough of myself and I can say and here's the path of the lover. Here's the path of like deepest deepest intimacy because mm. reality is relationship right it's like this it certainly is, is in your this chart is what, this is what it is you have definitely an indicator in your chart with jupiter and saturn you had two planets standing next to each other in relationship one is the life lesson we talked about saturn but right next with the same degree is a planet that's a hundred times the size of earth it's jupiter it's giant with sitting on your life lesson going you're going to do this big you're mm-hmm. not going to, and so publicly, I mean, you've had some, re- I can imagine, even for me when we started, I was like, tell me about what you do in relationship. And, yeah, and as sure. I heard your heart, I was like, okay, I'm learning from you. I'm adjusting what I thought was what I consider my norm and including yours. And that is the nature of astrology. It's accepting other people's realities with curiosity. Like, I don't know how to do what you do. I don't understand the nature of new relationship, but I'm curious. And this is what decides if we're going to evolve this life. That's why this podcast is so popular how much can we listen and learn and ask questions and scratch our head and do plant medicine and make us nuts so we can reevaluate our old thought processes that are stale yeah so you're really thank you and that's not an easy path no it's not an easy path there's nothing about you that's easy no i didn't choose the easy way and i wouldn't i wouldn't have it that way you know i mean i wouldn't i wouldn't have it any other way like i i i know myself the best when i'm when i put myself up against uh up against a, an adversary or obstacle or challenge or yes. something where i have to rise to the occasion yes in the in the in the doldrums i can get lazy i can i can get addicted to the easy way i can start to lose my way and certainly you know some of that got highlighted as well it's like i was like ah you know i'm not addicted to it and i don't have an addictive personality because i can stop anything when i want which i can but i don't and you would call me right the fuck out on that and i was like oh yeah i guess just being able to doesn't mean that I exactly. don't have an addictive Double personality. Pisces. Right, yeah. right. I think there's a real challenge right now on the planet for the people that don't live like you live on the edge with intensity. They misinterpret what could be mundane or boring as unproductive or unsuccessful, or they yeah. turn in on themselves. Like Aubrey Marcus does that. What about when I mean, the ego gets triggered? That side of the fence, the people that are just doing ordinary life and took the mundane and made it beautiful and are just having a regular job, do not underestimate the soul's evolution. 
in the presence of simplicity. Yeah. On the other hand, there's characters like you and me who have reached a certain level of public acclaim that are out there looking like, and we are taking a hardball, like we're playing right in the front edge. We've got the lights on us. Check this out. Yeah. And neither one is better or worse. But the confusion Absolutely. is our society values the ego with so much attention. And so it should. It certainly pays and it makes us interested. And we watch movies, and we watch football players, and we're like, look at that. And then back at the ranch, they're sitting in the audience going, what about me? There's no difference. The right. soul's evolving on its path based on the chart, and yours is big. You, that's Jupiter on your Jup your Saturn. Your life lesson so giant, you did it for all of us. So thank you for being willing to be seen, taking on the storyline, opening up our minds, talking about when I grew up, because I'm older than I look, plant medicine was, first of all, there was no such thing as, it was called drugs then yep. in the good old days. Yep. And we were all secretive about it. No one was allowed to go on a podcast and tell people like that. Uh, ayahuasca wasn't even a word in our vocabulary. So I, I want to thank you because you're pioneering, as you would in this chart, in a big way to give us permission to get out of the old story. Yeah. Well, well thank you for that acknowledgement. You know, and it, you do take a lot of arrows. I remember in 2010, I went on Joe Rogan's podcast and talked about my ayahuasca journeys and for about two months and, and then for the next two years every third comment was like go back to the jungle you fucking hippie you fucking druggie you know blah 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 but what's funny is like yeah i don't get that anymore you know like culture has shifted and caught up and you know that was one of the reflections you had is like there's some aspect of me that has the blessing and and i don't take credit for these blessings and especially now that i know how much I've come in in my assignment. Like I'm getting continual blessings and assignments. From the future. From the future. Mercury really, Aquarius. Really like that's that. So explain what what that is in my chart. So, so in the chart, there's different parts of our character. The sun is our personality. Everybody knows their sun sign. The moon is our inner world. It's at night. And yours is in sage, which makes you funny and witty and sarcastic. <laughs> and then this particular topic is Mercury. How does the mind work? What's the nature of your thought process? It's, yours is in the future. It's in Aquarius, the most exalted position, a memory that's really strong. We talked about that. A fascination with everything that's not normal, like cannot stand following, always three steps ahead of everyone, wondering where everybody is, why they aren't getting it. Mm -hmm. So that's Mercury and Aquarius. Mine is the opposite. Mine's Mercury and Taurus. I'm really slow. Honestly, you can't tell by looking. I, it has a long time for me to get something. I have to like sit on it and listen. You're like, whoo, wait. Yeah. So I had to learn from me permission to really take things in and slowly and not think I was dumb. And you, on the other hand, have to not be arrogant and think that you're so smart. Right. Because your mind's going way past ours. So this is the indicator, Mercury. Simple. And it's something that gets overrated. We hear Mercury retrograde, which you probably have poo-pooed. So did I. Sure. I thought it was so stupid. But we're in one right now. And everything that could go wrong goes wrong. My airplane was delayed, your car tire blew, whatever. There's all these stupid, and it's really true. First, I was like, because I'm so practical, like this is I was like you, mm -hmm. this astrology shit, come on. Too many back of magazines and too many people <laughs> playing tricks. And then it, after the years have gone by, and I'm at decades and decades of this, Mercury is the planet that describes the thought process in yours is in the future. It's yeah. an Aquarius. So it gives you the gift, but it also gives you a curse because mm -hmm. no one understands until we catch up. So notice the zeitgeist is now microdosing and psilocybin. It's all words that have become part of our public. And yeah. when I was growing up, oh my, secrets. You yeah. couldn't tell people. I, was, I made a list, don't tell anyone, <clears throat> of things I've never told anyone about my medicine and how <clears throat> I used medicine very particular like mm. i don't have because i'm so grounded or i try to be that's not true i'm such a flake that i had to learn to ground and right. i practice it right so i've really kept myself grounded because i'm really not i just <laughs> right. really learned the right. practice of earth for sure. example but there have been moments in my life major moments initiations i would say where i secretly went off and did medicine and do you have that list because you want to talk about them well i'm a little scared tell the truth um but I, I'm going to tell you one of the major ones. Yes, I, I've please. not gone public with this. So yes, please. This is new information. I'm going to skip to probably the most significant one. Mm -hmm. I was 
in my late 20s living in Hawaii, and I had a friend who lived on the island who was native, and he knew the whole island, and he loved to take psilocybin when we went hiking. But I was too scared because I was like, I just didn't trust myself. So for months, he took me all over the island doing this incredible in the waterfalls and being naked. We were just friends. We had the most amazing time. And finally, one day, I got the clue. I need to do the mushroom. So he made a big pot, of, a serious pot of tea. Yeah. It was during a new moon. I was watching the sun and moon come together. We were on a hill in the south part of Kauai. And I swear to you, and you'll believe me, I heard a voice specifically talking to me out of the sky with me leaning back, him sitting next to me. And they said, we're going to tell you your purpose that goes on. First thing was they said, you're here to teach people how to listen. I wow. was like, Listen? And then they said it again, and I screamed, listen to what? And then he said, don't talk to them like that. And I was like, did you hear anything? And he was like, no, but he was watching me having this whole conversation. Yeah. That was the first. And the second thing they told me was the planet was going through an initiation over this next hundred years. And it was about the emotional body and how prone we were to being addicted and being anxious and being scared. And that this whole emotional thing was going to have to be tamed. I didn't get a directive, but I got that. And the third was, this is the weird part, and you must go have a child. And I had made a decision never to have children. And I said, what? And they were like, right now. And I was like, with Harry? Like and you the, looked over to your naked friend? I was, but, <laughs> but I was married at the and time. His, and his cock just rose <laughs> no, up No, no, no. You're making sun. stuff up, and Mr. Then, Pisces. This is, no, no. It's not how it went. Oh, that's okay, my sad. So I like your story. Yeah. Yes. But this is the truth is, I was like, and they said no. And then I was married at the time. I went home. My husband was in London, called uh -huh. him from Hawaii and said, we had made a pact that we weren't having children. I said, I did mushrooms. And I heard a loud message to go have children. And he was like, well, they didn't tell me. We went back to London. I went back. We made love once I was pregnant. Whoa. So that was one of the most significant. I don't tell people that story. Yeah. Fast forward, this gets crazy. When my son was turning 13 for his bar mitzvah, I gave him the gift of an artist to come into his room and paint anything he wanted. And he had this little cove where his bed went, and he chose to paint mushrooms. He did this whole unbelievable oh, moral mural with, yeah, I didn't, I didn't tell him until years later, like, so point being that there's messages, yes. I couldn't tell people that story. I did listen and obey. And part of my series of stories is many times, including my ayahuasca journey that I don't often talk about. I've only done it twice, but it was a directive and clarity. And I use the medicine in these moments, which I can make a note of, to actually give me direction to follow. And I, didn't, I remembered every single trip yeah. with messages. So I always think less is more, said the elder. Yeah. And for some people like you, you can manage to be in those worlds with so much comfort. For me, it's like seatbelt on. Oh, my God, where are we going? So I'm very cautious, and I do recognize the power mm. of the transparency between the worlds. Yeah. How do we get on the other side of the veil Yeah. if we don't use medicine? It's Thank you for sharing those stories. Like, I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, I've had so many unbelievably powerful gifts and messages, even very practical stuff like the this the reason this studio exists and I have the money to create it and all of this was because I built on it. Now, on it was a hangover supplement company. And then I went to do ayahuasca for my first time and it was actually the the night of the second journey, so it was a series mm -hmm. of 3. And the first one was crazy. I've told these stories all many times, but in that night of the second journey, it showed like the spirit of ayahuasca showed me that I had to pivot and get rid of all of the hangover supplements and switch over and put everything into alpha brain and showed me how to change my marketing, like very, very practical, tangible things about exactly what I needed to do. And if I did exactly what it said, like that would be the beating heart that would provide the resources for everything that I was going to build and create. And sure enough, like after that journey, you know, several months later, I followed directions and then, you know, on it was birth. So I tell all of these crazy stories about visions and battles with demons and all kinds of crazy things, but there's also really, really practical advice. Well, it's so interesting because in your chart, I told you this yesterday, Neptune is the planet of drugs or altered states. It's at the very top of the chart when you were born in the house of the career that you would use medicine and it's sitting right next to your moon. So your emotional body activates when you're on the medicine in a professional 10th house Capricorn. See, it's all jargon. The short 
short answer is that you're supposed to be serving medicine in the form of on it, which I told you I've been taking for seven years. Yeah. I had no idea it was you. <laughs> so funny. And it has made such a difference. And I think part yeah. of why I haven't aged and why I've, I've been so healthy. I know. You told me your age. And I was like, what the? You remember? Yeah, 67, right? I'm almost 70. Yeah. Good memory. See, Mercury and Aquarius. So yes, in your chart, you have no earth, but there is an indicator that the medicine speaks to you at a practical level because of the purpose. Right. Like your service to us has been echoed through your ability to hear manifest. And then there's consequences. People all think you're a little crazy and you've gone off the sure. path, and but it doesn't seem to bug you. No, no, and because I, I really, tr I really trust myself, and I trust the med and I and I trust myself to to fall and get back up. I trust myself to go too far and go. Whoops! Like explored that boundary. Now I know it's a boundary. But the part of my nature is I look at all the boundaries and I go, maybe, you know, like someone says something and I go, maybe. And then I test it and sometimes I'll cross the boundary and it'll be nothing but broken glass and like, and I'll be like, oh fuck, like that was a good boundary, you know, hat tip to the people who made it. And other times I'll look at something and I'll be like, this is an old and stale, you know, dogmatic rule that actually needs to be updated. This table needs to be flipped. It's so double Pisces. Your function in this life is to stretch and go past the boundaries, but there and there's consequences. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, and no in the doubt. meantime, you can't not not be you. This is where astrology comes in. Like if I said to you, stop that, you'd be like, well, how am I going to not be myself? Right. And everyone listening to this has a personality type based on their chart that when given permission, like you're this way, they're so, it's like a relief. Like yeah. someone just tell me it's okay that I'm all fucked up. I was going to write my new title for my new book, You're Fucked Up and I Still Like You. But they wouldn't <laughs> let me use it. They wouldn't let me use it. But it's just that, that every chart says there's quirky quirks. There's parts of your character that are really, boundaries are an issue for double Pisces. And knowing that, naming it without judgment, like letting that be, that's your truth. What a relief in saying, yeah, I have no boundaries. What a loser. I can't believe I can't. I've made so many mistakes. Right. Like you're supposed to, you are supposed to make mistakes. <laughs> yeah. And I certainly have. And, and I'm sure I continued continually will. One of the things is we went through all of the different elements and I want you to talk about the elements, but there was functions of the certain elements that actually needed to be brought into the forefront to help me, you know, with certain levels of discernment. In certain areas of discernment, I'm That's very sharp. Right. In certain, I'm very loose and flexible because of my lack of boundary kind of nature. And there was certain parts that I've also become aware that like, oh shit, like I need to, I need to get some things discern. together and, and really discern and really create the, the right next you know, the next steps. And, and pacing was yeah, a big topic. Yeah. For sure. So go through the elements and, yes. you know, we can talk about my story or talk about yeah, them generally. Yeah. So in that book, The Missing Element, there's no astrology in it at all. I didn't bring it to you. But in that book, you figure out what your missing element is and then you read about that and you cultivate it. So let me go through the four of them. Yeah. So the first one, which you are so good at, immediately you moved right into it was water. Mm -hmm. And water is the element that can sit si silently, feel their feelings. I mean, you had tears within minutes. Yeah. Not everyone can do that. Yeah. So that's the Pisces. Water is the element in all I of can't, us. I can't stop it. You no, know, my, no, you're my cry, my cry percentage on podcasts is, uh, is embarrassingly high. Yeah. Embarrassingly high. It doesn't high. surprise me. It's your function. It's your yeah. soul. The rising sign is your soul. So you're not only ego is Pisces, the sun sign's the ego, but the rising sign or the ascendant is also Pisces. So your ego and your soul are the same. It's very unusual because you're double Pisces. Mm -hmm. So therefore, your emotional receptivity, it, it's a soulful urge. You can't right. resist it. Yeah. So water is the first element. All the people out there who are sensitive and mushy and they want to stay home and they cuddle and they don't want to come out of the house and they just love being with their favorite people only and they love to get high and they love to be altered and they want to drink and any way to alter this reality to, to take off the assault because they're so sensitive mm. and they care so much that they tend to either cry a lot or they go into ice. And they can't feel anymore mm. and they get numb. The same mm. as to a lot of men with water. So it creates- As a kind of protective mechanism exactly. to the sensitivity. It's embarrassing. You're so good at it. Most people don't like to cry. And I, for the first time I met you, we were with Aaron Rodgers at that big event in um, Denver, mm -hmm. that big 
drug event? What's yeah, that called? Yeah, the uh, MAPS, the MAPS conference. That was so bad. I should have just said that. <laughs> the big MAPS conference yeah, that I couldn't believe sure. I was at. Um, and you were sitting in the front and you cry. I saw. I thought, this man's amazing. You cried. You yeah, in front tears. of a big audience. Yeah, yeah, that's when I knew. So that is an unusual response for a male or anyone to feel comfortable. Some people block it and it freezes and it becomes like a stilted, uncomfortable, I don't want to be around people. I'm embarrassed. Mm-hmm. You you stepped over your embarrassment. Totally. And the high road of water is psychic. It's intuitive. It's mediumship. It's going between the worlds. It's being able to feel things without knowing how you know. It's hearing voices. It's having dreams. It's a lot of what Pisces is all about, the mystical, magical realm that is not measured by the hard stuff. So at the low level, they're self-conscious, embarrassed, and they don't tell anyone. They can't figure out what their dreams mean. They just want to get high and get out of here. Mm. help Mm -hmm. and at the high level they're artists they're painters they're musicians they hear the tune because they can hear the celestial tunes they can write they can inspire they write poetry Mm -hmm. their gift is so magical and they're lovers it is the lover it's the part of us that wants to get out of the physical world into the magical world without all the words right like shut up already right right yeah i mean that was a big that was also you know something that I've known as well, but like love making for me is one of the greatest escapes. You know, obviously the medicine path, and it's not just escape. There's so much information, so much download. But like for me, like everything falls away when I make ego's love. gone. Everything it's full merger. It's union. You know, orgasm it's union with is the a divine. small death in yeah. French. The end of the ego, the release of the stupid ego trying Le to control. Petit mort. Exactly. So that's the water. Isn't this great? We're talking about sex and drugs. This is water. Yeah. Water is the yum yum factor. It's the ability to be in the body and feel both pain or pleasure without resistance. Now that's mm. a high road. Yeah. To be able to let that's why in ayahuasca there's so many tears and people are throwing up. That's water. It's like purging. Get this stuff out of you and stop being so full of shit. That's yeah. Ayahuasca goes, okay, we're done. And if you can't, if you can't, if you block yourself from feeling the pain, you block yourself from feeling the pleasure. Yes. You become numb. And I've recognized that like numbness is the enemy. You know, I've, I've known that for a long time for me because I've felt that, well, I could just get numb, but then I can't actually feel the beauty of this life, That's right. which is like really what I live for is the beauty of everything. And the low level water is addiction because mm-hmm. we so want to get away. We so want to escape. We so want to go home to the oneness, as you call it, or the union yeah. that we diminish our relationship with earth, which we'll get to in a minute. Yeah. So important to balance all four of them. There's four wheels in a car. There's four elements. One element goes down and the whole system goes off. So you want to have water, but not at the expense of any of the other. And we'll keep going. Yeah. All right. Let's keep going. So water, nine months in a womb. It's always the beginning of every cycle. You wake up in the morning, you brush your teeth, you take a shower. Water is always the first thing at a party. Would you like something to drink? First yep. thing people say, water always starts everything. Then we go to air. The baby has the first breath. And this is where communication came in. And this is in our process. We actually went to earth, but I'm going to talk about air. Hold on. Let's do this right. Because we went through 4E yesterday, and we went to Earth next. But I'm going to take you to the natural rhythm is first comes water, yep. nine months, and then comes the breath. And this is consciousness. So now we're talking, and we're thinking, and we're doing podcasts, and we're communicating, and relationships, and people, and so interesting, and who are we in love with, and who aren't we, and decisions, and I'm so confused, and I want to write it down. I'm going to call my friend. I changed my mind. I should call my friend. No, I can't remember what I said. I need therapy. I'm so confused. I, did I write it down? Did I leave my keys somewhere? I can't remember. It's the unbelievable airheads in the world at their worst who spin around and they're so interesting and I'm not going to say your wife has a lot of this and they talk a lot and they use their hands and they have creative ideas and they've got many, many options and they change their mind. They have a new idea and they want to hear your opinion. Yeah. So they put the podcast on and then another podcast and by the time they're done, they can't remember what they said. So at their worst, they have too much intellectual appetite, which makes the mind spinny and they can get very confused and they say yes to everyone to be nice. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So they become the nice man and they become the one that's so socially graceful and so generous and so kind because they're seeking approval. That's the level where the psychology at the truth of error is very decisive, has a relationship to their emotional body, water, so they know what their intuition said and that's where their decisions are coming from. Right. But if the water and the air aren't connected because the secretly water was hidden behind and now air is all dingy, the wisdom is no, no. I'm listening to my message. I'm paying attention to whatever I got my message from my meditation. And now I'm going to speak to you from truth. I'm Mm. going to use my words to be honest. That was a big thing that kind of came through in the session was I left that and I was like the purity of Aubrey-ness. 
like the purity and the purity is truth. It's just straight. It's just the straight truth. And I've always sought to be there, but I can also, I can also, you know, sometimes hold back a little bit of the truth. I don't, I'm not dishonest and I've never been a liar, but you know, I'll be selective and strategic, but there's a pure Aubrey that isn't any of that. That's just like, this is exactly it. And full love, you know, you don't have to be mean with right, the truth, right. but full love, but full truth. And like, that's the full, pure Aubrey. That's, that's the, the air king. That's right. The air king needed, needed to actually sit in rather than the air courtesan who is just trying to please and trying exactly. to manage and, and right. all of these And then other getting things. indecisive and saying yes to what too many times. Exactly. Right. So the right use of error is the choice factor from a mind who is honest, to your point, that speaks truth and that has the ability to be authentic. So they're speaking right out of their gut and out of their truth. And then those people, we love to hear their stories and we love to hear their poems and we love to hear their words because they're just like soothing balm. When words is our poetry and we're kind to each other and we really use the air relationship to be the, the doorway to actually get closer and to bump and then get closer, that's the high road of air. The low road is I don't want to do relationship. I'm sick of dating. People are so stupid. All those low level air people that they just get really dippy and they're superficial and they're not real and you feel like they're fake it and they're all dressed up and they look so cute, but they're not real. That's the discrepancy is who's got mm -hmm. their words of truth that are speaking from a deep place of knowing as compared to that whole social Which media. Which is the connection with the air and the water. Just exactly. making sure that that deep yes. intuition yes. and the soul's knowing is matching the words. And that's why people meditate. And that's why they do medicine to keep in touch with the water. When you get direction from the highest realm, then the mind can make decisions. But right. you have to know how to listen. And you have to follow instructions, you know, and for the most part I have. And then sometimes, sometimes I haven't. And we talked about that as well. Like I got a clear instruction to take 40 days and just be out on the land and in this purification of Aubrey. And I've just been like, yeah, 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 certainly. I will certainly get to that at some point later. And it's, I've pushed it off for years, years. And now it's like, Hello. I'm not, and that was one of, that's why the session yesterday was life changing. It was like, okay, there's no more, put, there's no more putting this off. And that's what happens with clean air, which is my gift this lifetime as a, a therapist. I have a master's in clinical psychology. So I learned how to work with the psyche of somebody by using words to free them. So if I ask the right questions and we engage at a really authentic level, you're going to speak to yourself. I was telling you what I designed that process for E4 was so people would tell themselves the truth so I didn't have to. Mm -hmm. And that's good, healthy air. Typically, air people are like talking, talking. They have so many ideas and they change their mind. You're so confused. When someone speaks speaks with clarity because they know their truth. It's, in, it's like what blue is like. It's so hard to not listen. Mm. And the words get strung together and you're like, what she say? Like it's a tickling of the brain that comes from the deepest, highest place, not the ego doing the typical, all the memes, all the social media, mm -hmm. all the Instagram, all that stuff is air. And you can't remember it until it becomes your words. Right. And that's what I really want to acknowledge. Your gift is your Mercury in Aquarius is a rebel. You can't follow, and you keep sharing with us your process. Mm -hmm. Mercury in Aquarius, your error is not a follower. And by the right. way, you can't get air to stay still anyway. It sneaks out of everywhere. It's always wiggling. <laughs> air people are always wiggling. Right, right, right. And yours is rebellious, but until you become obedient, I love what you said. When you're hearing a message and you didn't listen, and then I had to tickle that out of you, and then you were like telling yourself, what are you doing? Yeah, totally. It was just like that. Yeah. yeah it's, it's clean air. Yeah, it's like it's purifying that that distortion that can get in the way because when you have a high faculty and competency in the air it's also it's a double-edged sword because you can justify anything and you can actually explain anything to anybody except for your truest highest self and you know we'll get to that in the fire you really called forward my highest self to to actually burn away yes. and purify every other thought that wasn't there and, and boy, you know, did you show up yeah, as I expected. Sure. Yeah, thank you. Thank yes. you. And, and really, because I'm not afraid of the truth and I'm not afraid of being wrong and I'm not attached to See, being if right. If everyone could use fresh air like that and say out loud, 
I don't want, I'm okay with being wrong and I want to tell the truth and I'm not scared. If people could use the air to say to their partners, I feel like we're really not connect. Like just tell the truth. I feel like we're really not connecting. I feel like I really want to be honest with you. I feel like I'm not being myself. If people could use that language in really raw terms, we'd all be so vulnerable and honest. Yeah, I have. A, it's interesting with the fit for service community. You know, I'm leading a a class called Romantically Fit, and the assignment for the class is a process that I've used with my partners called Bring It to a Hundred, and it's a very kind of ceremonial conversation that, and medicine can be involved or not, it doesn't matter. But you really take some deep breaths and know that you're going to bring all of Ooh, the truth that we're it. submerged, you know, all That's of fresh the, air. Yeah. And just clear it all out. And, you know, you have to really trust each other to be able to hold that and also maintain love and contact as you go through. But it's the only thing that can bring that kind of radical That's zivug, beautiful. that union together is when you're able to show all of the parts of yourself, even the little monsters and even the little hidden parts. You got to move all the veils of shame aside and just express it like it is. This is part of your charisma is you speak to things that many of us don't know how to speak to. And then it gives us freedom to talk about it. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Then we go to earth and earth is the practice. So air is what university, going to school, going to high school, learning your language, being a little kid, learning words. It's all that first air is nine months in the womb. Then we spend like at least 18 to 24 years studying, thinking, studying, thinking, using the mind. And then we come to earth. This is the element of practicality, of money, Mm -hmm. of ground, of insurance, of spreadsheets, of Excel spreadsheets, dealing with all the details, the cleaning supplies at Costco. It's so funny. People love to go to Costco and buy boxes of Windex. Like, let's just go buy a whole bunch of paper towel and Windex. That's a fun thing for an earth person. Practicality, numbers, order, keeping things all as they should be, being on time, being responsible. So it's the part in life. The reason why this planet's called Earth, it's not because it's green. It's actually a blue planet. It should be called water down here. Like we're dealing with so much emotional content, mm. but it's it's earth, which means you've got to keep your shit together. You got to pay the rent. You got to pay your taxes. You got to right. make sure. So this is the practical realm. And for some people, easy. They do it in their sleep. I mean, they really go to Costco for a date night. For some people, that's a nightmare. Like right. someone else clean this shit up. I don't want to brush my teeth. I don't want to wash my, I don't want to clean all this. <laughs> so it's a two different variations, up and down, high road, low road. And you had, it's so interesting because you had no earth, but to our point we started with is, God, God has said, don't give them any more because you're so good at it. Right. I was surprised, but not surprised after I heard you tell the story of like, what do you do? So this is the realm where people either love their work, they can't wait to get up in the morning and they're making money and they're sharing it, or oh, I don't want to go to work. I don't want to do the dishes. I don't, and they complain. Earth mm-hmm. people at their worst complain a lot because they feel responsible. They're the designated driver. And the high road is they love service and they get results and they make all this money. And then they get to buy presents for people and they do all this sharing and they right. love to share their money. That's the high road. Yeah. So you can see the range of the elements. Right, right. Yeah, and it's it's funny because I have, you know, both of the like so it's interesting my relationship with earth because it's simultaneously one of the most challenging and uncomfortable aspects of me and also one of my also one of my great gifts superpowers yeah it's really and that's and that's where i think the the complexity of this knowing that okay just because you don't have any earth that and so in a in a kind of very superficial reading without knowing these deeper levels that you're talking about it might be like, well, this doesn't fit. You know, I've obviously accomplished plenty of stuff in Earth and I don't have any Earth, so this is all bullshit. But then understanding like, oh, no, 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 these lessons I already had. And so I'm actually calling on lessons that I've already learned from my soul's path. And now I don't need any more. And this is not the lesson that I need to learn, but I still get to bring those gifts forward in this incarnation. It's some people that inherit money. This is an inheritance from past lives. We always judge people, people that are super rich, like, well, how did they do that? And then there's people that are super poor that never get money, no matter how much they work. That's karma. It's karma on both ends and not a good or bad thing. It's become very exciting because of my career, having worked with celebrities throughout my lifetime, watching people with lots of money and watching people that don't have money, because I like to work with everyone and go sneak into their chart. And, And seeing it's to your point, what level of consciousness 
consciousness and my bringing based on my past? How updated am I in the now to actually celebrate being on earth? Because it's not easy right now. This is the hardest time, I think, yeah. for the, the human condition that with 8 billion, there's never been 8 billion people here. Right. And the radical interconnectivity and then all of the new technologies yes, that are and disrupting the 5G things. And the and sound. And the, even right now, I can hear vibration all the time. Right. So it's not an easy time to be here. And so how do we ground? How do we take off our shoes? I live in Hawaii half the year. Mm. I spend a lot of time barefoot and I spend a lot of time consciously choosing because I'm not grounded by nature. This was a, what I want to say to people is if you're missing one of these elements, you grow it. So you came in and inherited a lot of earth from your own past lives. I did not. So I had to learn and it wasn't fun. Like, ew, who wants to do, I would sit in these P&L, I have this business and they'd have P&L meetings and I'd be like, what? And then I had to pretend like I knew what they were talking about. And then I would ask my best friend who's very wealthy, like, can you help? And then he'd give me the right answer and I'd go call, make the call and say what he said. I'd written. So it took me years to get good at it and yeah. I made a practice of it because right. my missing element was earth. And that's what you find out in the book. So yours is not missing. And there's very few people I'd say on this planet right now that are calmly grounded in their nervous system because the earth element is so jacked up with so much change and so many people. And this is one of my promises this lifetime as an elder. How do I calm down my nervous system so I can calm down you? Mm -hmm. which is what happened yesterday. So I can sit next to you and put my hand on your, your knee and let the energy ground because I'm grounded, right. which did not come naturally. If you would have seen the little Jewish Detroit girl being a cheerleader, I was nuts. I had so much energy. I was a crazy girl. I was a gymnast and a dancer and I went to university and studied dance. I was like a like a bit like your wife. Yeah, I mean, not in, yeah, I mean, in the yeah, best yeah, way. For sure. And then as years went by, I was like, I can't count on other people for money. I have to ground myself. I have to take my feet and put myself on this planet and cook and start cleaning. Mm. It was so like, ooh, and now I'm really good at it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't natural. And the art of this game, the four elements, once again, four wheels in a car, the one that's missing, fill it up. Yeah. You have a very healthy relationship with all four. It's not like you could not, I mean, really, if you think about it yesterday, yeah. Yeah. you were very comfortable in earth, even though it was unfamiliar by your chart. Right. It's something you came with almost too much. Mm -hmm. Like you're saying, yes, you could just manifest and manifest and manifest and manifest. And a lot of that is relying on, you know, both the gifts of water, which is my ability to see and my ability to intuit and receive guidance from beyond me. You know, and, sure, and yes. so many of these different messages and gifts and blessings, like I could, you know, if people, people love to say, you know, oh, you know, so, you know, it must have been nice growing up in a family that was wealthy. Well, my dad lost his mind and went crazy before he ever even saw me be successful, right? Like it was beautiful. I had a beautiful relationship with my father and my, all my parents were gifted, but people try to explain like, right. oh, the great gifts, you know, it must have been, you must have got money from his parents. I never got any money from my parents. Right. I mean, they paid for my college, which is a blessing, of course, but I made on it myself. I borrowed money from, you know, got money from all the scraped together a little bit, you know, $110,000 and built that whole thing. Crazy story. But the blessings, really, what they're not looking at, if they want to say like, wow, you were really blessed. Well, I'm really blessed by my ability to receive, to listen. To listen. Like, and that is a huge, huge blessing. And, and also your air, gifted. you're so good with people because you have all that air in yeah. your chart, more air than any other element, communicating and networking and talking and paying attention to what they say and asking questions. You're very good at, I mean, I see it in your, this is why this podcast is so interesting because you ask such good, you're not normal. Let's start there. Mm -hmm. In case anybody was wondering. And part of that is your error. Like you ask out of the box questions and your people skills added to that download coming is you can play the game sure. at a very high level. Yeah. And sense. that's, and that's so with that blessing, I've always felt this immense responsibility. And this responsibility is also one of the challenge, the blessings and the challenges, right? Because I can feel so like, I feel so blessed, like so impossibly blessed and so impossibly grateful for the life I've been given. But then I say, okay, in order to pay that back, I got to give everything. Yeah, I know. I got to give everything and, and give everything even at the cost of the cost of my own health and heart and well-being and and that's you know that's a challenge and that's where that the you know putting on the melchut the kingship of of the heir the decision maker to say no you got to follow your own advice you got to become 
fit for service. You can't just be all service. You got to nourish yourself. You were listening. You were listening. Yeah, for sure. Good answer. Yeah. So that's the error. And then back to the earth and then let's finish. That was such an interesting conversation. That was really what you just spoke to is how do we let ourselves stay true to ourselves and how do we call ourselves out when we know there's something incongruent? Mm -hmm. That's a big one for a modern day civilization. How do I stay honest? That's all error. How do I, and I use therapists and best friends in my relationship to say, tell me when I'm full of shit, because I can't tell. Mm. And that keeps me honest. That's what a good therapist, that's what happened yesterday. Like, uh, uh, uh. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so that brings us to fire. Fire. Fire is the element where we get super blunt and we say shit and we're honest and we hit a drum. In your case, we were using a rattle and we call in our, our ancestors and our council. And it's shamanic. It's very much medicine. Fire is when we're like, okay, I need help. This mm -hmm. is blunt and honest. And honestly, I'm not able to tell the truth for some reason or mm -hmm. I feel blocked. Fire just wakes everybody up and gets everything going. Ding, ding, ding. Music, loud, getting drunk, being blunt, being funny, um, showing off, getting on stage, singing, being able to grab the mic. That's mm -hmm. fire. It's the mm -hmm. courage to stand up stand out and be uninhibited mm -hmm. which you and i both have a lot of at home. <laughs> um, and then the low side of that is they're obnoxious their yeah. ego gets carried away they're super loud they need all the attention they're not easy to get like, close to because they're arrogant and they stand apart and you feel like they're you're not comfortable being with them because they're better than that's the low level of fire arrogance and a bit of like i'm the best because they are Mm. And then the high level is they're spiritually shamanic. So they're doing all that, remembering that it's not them that's doing it. Right. When a high level being who's really visible and has gotten all kinds of acknowledgement can take off that mask of whatever the role is, whoever we are. I'm an astrologer. This little Jewish girl from Detroit turns into an astrologer, gets famous, so they say. And meanwhile, underneath my fire and being totally honest is, I don't know how that happened. And it makes me laugh. Mm -hmm. It's kind of fun. I mean, somehow by me being authentic and being energetic and being blunt and taking risks and going to graduate school and saying to them, I want to study psychology and astrology. They were like, what did you just say? Those two words didn't go together in the 80s right. when I was in graduate school, but I was fiery enough to go, oh, yes, they do. And watch this. And then I study, you'll love this, chronic mental patients chart. I went to the hospitals in LA with chronic mental patients, and I did all their charts to see was there correlation to mental illness. And there was. Wow. What did you find? Uranus. <laughs> <laughs> the plan that I, I'm not even going to go there because there's too many people I could make reference to, but it's the people that can't follow at all. I'm not going to mention Aaron Rodgers, and they can't fit in. <laughs> they can't do a normal path. They can't not say the thing. They right. can't spill the beans. They're Uranian. They're individualistic. They're advanced. They're ahead of us, but they're strange. So that was part of what I saw with mental illness back in the olden days. Uh -huh. And that's so... Uranus is also Neptune, right? They're, so it has well, they're a, cousins. They live next door. So okay. there's these outer planets. You have a strong Neptune, which is the other worlds and going between the worlds. So Ur Uranus, what's Uranus, the other name for Uranus? Uran there's, there's, these are the outer planets. There's no other name. There's oh, wow. Neptune, Uranus, and Pluto. It starts with Jupiter. It starts with Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, Uranus, and Pluto. You think I would know this by now. So no, they're independent flavors. They're, right. they're independent archetypes. And the Uranian archetype is very fiery by nature. It's loud and it's found, get ready, during the French Revolution when they were changing all the rules of the government. Uranus is a personality type who says, I am not going to do what was done before. Now you have shades of this, but not like Aaron. Is it okay mm -hmm. to talk about him? <laughs> you have a very strong Neptune, which is one of the places you and he connect. Neptune is the planet that goes between the worlds, uh -huh. that has the gift of channeling, that knows how to be the poet, that can bring in higher frequencies. So there's different places. And the last one is Pluto. I'm just going to give you an astrology class. Mm -hmm. Pluto is the furthest planet out. We cannot see it. It is was demoted by a group of astronomers that got together, a hundred of them, in a room and decided they were going to demote Pluto. Why? This is about 20 years ago. They didn't. Because Pluto rules the underbelly, the unconscious. It was found in 1930. They wanted to keep it in the shadow. They wanted to keep it in the shadow and cut it off. When Hitler and Freud and Einstein were all working with this invisible energy, we had no name for it at the time, named the unconscious or nuclear energy, but it's Plutonian energy. So those are the out, I don't know how we got to this. Those are the three outer planets that mm -hmm. have great influence on our planet. And each person, like I'm strongly, it sounds so funny, I'm strongly Uranian. I don't follow. Mm -hmm. I couldn't be a therapist and I couldn't be an astrologer. I've never associated to one astrology group or one psychology group mm -hmm. because my Uranus is so strong that I was like, I'm not going to fit in when I start telling them what I'm doing. 
I'm not doing proper astrology because I brought psychology to it. And I'm not doing proper you know, astro- psychology because I have so much astrology in it. So I got left out, which was just fine with me. Yeah. And that's the personality type that's fiery, uh-huh. that's bold, that stands apart. And you have this as well, where if you don't like it, it's okay. And that can come off as arrogant and too self-confident. And the secret of fire people is they're insecure. Because they're like, I'm going to get in trouble soon. I just know it. Mm -hmm. They wait to get in trouble. Someone's going to scream at me and get mad. That's the low level. And when the wisdom of the fire gets cultivated, which is what you're growing, they're blunt and they're honest. So when we sat together and you said, oh, no, I don't have a problem. I went, excuse me. Mm -hmm. That was fire. Mm -hmm. Like, Aubrey, and you went, oh, thanks. Yeah, maybe there is something about overusing something and not having the choice factor. Right. But who could say that to Aubrey Marcus? A fiery, well-trained astrologer because I've gotten to the point where I'm almost 70. So now I'm just free with my fire. Yeah, and it's such a it's such a gift too. And it makes it so fun. It, you know, it's it's frustrating. One of the things that's I think probably the most frustrating for me is because of maybe in myself, if I get called out and it's true, I'm like I'm bound by this field of value to be like Oh, I don't know. I'm going to admit it. And I'm not going to double down and double down on my own justification, even though I could. That's healthy fight. You know, even though I could, I'm not going to. And so when I, when I have somebody who can do that, it's just such a blessing when I can, when someone can call say something, up. call me out or change my opinion radically. You know, where I like have a strong belief in something. Like you don't believe in astrology and now you yeah, do. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I'm like, and, and I've been public about my, my skepticism about astrology. And I can be like, oh, yeah, I was wrong. Great. I you love know, that story. And I think that's the, you know, it's something we don't see modeled in our leadership enough either. You know, I mean, you're so right. Politicians are always just doubling down on their position and never, never taking responsibility because people try to freeze you in your, in your wrongness and then say you're wrong. And so you'll never be right. Well, we're all going to be wrong. It's about how can you acknowledge when you're wrong and then adapt to that. There's so little example in our eldership of how to use fire, how to get angry, how to be direct, how to say I'm sorry, how to say I was wrong. Like to be able to start using those skills in a heightened way is the job of everyone listening to this. We are preparing for another generation, the children that you guys are bringing in, because I'm old. Er. The next generation behind us, they're waiting and looking at their parents going, are you guys going to get this right? Because so far, we're not doing great right. based on the collective. That's not to say that the medicine people are taking and the ability to alter the point of view of how do you tell the truth and say, yeah, you're right. I'm wrong and I'm sorry and I need your help and please help me. Those are things that fire people can't, in old stories couldn't say. So there's not a lot of examples. But one of my promises this lifetime was I want to get fire right. I had my father was a great teacher. My mother had a terrible temper. She would throw things. And so it would get really loud. You can imagine. And then he would just walk up to her and say, I'm going for a walk. I'll be right back. And he'd leave the house. And then she would calm down. And and I thought, well, that's the wisest response. When there's a fight, when the war is about to occur, drop your arms, back it up, take a breath. Mm -hmm. But that takes a lot of courage or wisdom to know how to activate your fire to calm down when someone's right in your face. Yeah, absolutely. He'd say, why is there going to be two of us in this house looking like you? (laughs) (laughs) That's that's, a great teacher. That's a great story. What about the element ether? Do you deal with this at all? Does this come in? And is this like the fifth element? So in my book, that's coming out in April 2025. The last chapter is called The 13th Sign, which I know you asked about. There is a 13th sign that was found, but that's not the one I'm talking about. Ether right. is the worlds between the worlds. Ether is when time, you're so good at this with your Venus at zero degrees. I told you about this yesterday. You have a access point of genius in the name of love, Venus, in Pisces, the highest love, Christ love, in the house of Pisces. Like You are really here this lifetime embodying a very refined, higher level of love. That's your zero degrees. That's so funny. I just went off on that. Mm-hmm. Um, th- do the question again. I had a brain fart. Beep, beep, beep. Ether 13th sign. No wonder I did. Sign. Of course I did. Because the 13th sign is when you step out of time. Right. Oh, that was so fun. I did it live time. It's when time stands still. The 13th sign is what I call the observer. This is all my work. This is what the session was yesterday. Come up and out with me. Look back over at Aubrey. See his different characters and then check in with him. Who does he want to listen to? Like there's freedom that happens once the observer's on. So the ether, the 13th sign is where you stop. You take a breath and you ask yourself, like, how awake am I right now? Where am I? Mm-hmm. How is this going? How is this podcast? When when you stop time 
and you let yourself become aware of the 13th sign or the ether or the zero degree where you're standing out, that's where awareness is really excited. Oh, good. Someone's home. Yeah. Now we have a breath. This is, you know, the Greek words for like chronological time is chronos. And then the stepping outside of time is called kairos. And kairos is another form of time. It's timelessness. It's the timeless time. It's the time in the other dimensions that are not bound by Hebrew, they chronos. call it ein sof. Yeah. It's the before time exists, where there's another zone. And some, for some reason, I, like you, have a fascination with the other worlds. And I remember, and it's funny to say this because I'm trying so hard to ground, but I have this very fond memory of the place we go when we're in that calm place, standing still in the Ein Sof, before the form, in that open space. And it's not easy to get to. And that's why drugs are so popular. Mm -hmm. They're like, take me home. Remind me about that place. But how do you do that while you're on Earth, in the middle of doing the dishes? with the microphone with the kid with the phone with the how do you stay in that present state that's the practice of what the real truth of the 13th sign is can i return to that place can i go to the ether can i stop in the middle of making love when the energy is building this is tantra mm -hmm. but there's so few people that can stay awake at, especially in the moment of death this is when the most, imp my dear friend right now is leaving the world. It's a genius man I've known for so many years. He's written and he's read all there is about near-death experiences. The guy's a, a complete genius. You would think on his way out, he would calmly walk out, but no, he's in complete and total resistance. Shocking. Because when the human emotional body gets triggered and his daughters are in the room and he doesn't want to leave, yeah. Instead of walking gracefully into the Ein Sof, into the 13th sign, into the, he's in pure resistance. And that is the dilemma of the human condition right now. We're all in the, we're in a transition. You know this. All the people in your circle I've met today are all leaders in their own way of not following. You draw yeah. them. Yeah. You just, they follow you around because they're like comfortable. Now they're weird and it feels normal. Right. Yeah, I mean, so much of, there's so many wisdom traditions who say that one of the goals of our life is to practice how to die, you know, so that we can make that transition, you know, with Today's full, with full awareness. Die. Yeah, Stay awake. Stay awake. Nula waung. And that's the danger of drugs, and that's the danger of indulgence, and that's the danger of too much money. It's the danger of falling asleep because you're so comfortable and you're having so much fun, you can't wait to make love. When you can stay still and be in the presence of this place raw without being filtered, and it's really a minimalism practice. I think less is more. If people knew how to use the medicine and use the altered states and use the ability to dream off and go on social media in moderation, that's what we looked at yesterday, pacing. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm not aging normally because I've been pacing the whole time, like slow down. I don't know why everyone's in a rush. It's confusing to me. Everybody's in a rush. If you watch how we go through our day, we're looking at our watch and we got the time thing. We feel like I'm on my way to the airport and I'm getting all like, calm down, Deborah. I say to myself, yeah, take a breath. Yeah. That's a hard one for me. That's a, that's a really hard one for me. It always feels like everything is so urgent and needs to be done immediately. And so permission it, to know that time goes on forever in every direction. That's the truth. Yeah. And that once your awareness is on and you're honoring the 13th sign, which is where we stand off the screen, out of the character for a minute, and take a breath, everything slows down. But it's really fun when you're snuggled up with your dog or your baby or your best friend or your lover. It's a lot easier to snuggle up and relax than when you're by yourself. And that's one of the windows in this planet that's really suffering is loneliness. And being alone here in the middle of a room at a coffee shop mm. in the middle of an airport that's the weirdest part who like that's what happened yesterday we really bonded we had a intimate exchange and that's what we're all longing for yeah who yeah. can see me and love me with all my funny parts right right and when you feel that it's it's, it's the bliss it's bliss you feel you feel like you're you're at home in the universe again and that's what astrology is for and at the end of a good astrology reading a really good astrology reading you should finish going i felt so understood like that was and now i get it that's what astrology is for essentially is to help you fall in love with you so you can get on with the movie because mm -hmm. you can't get rid of you ha ha it doesn't go away yeah Have you noticed yeah i mean this is this is our human, you know, and it's our only, it's our responsibility to take care of it. And your soul follows you around across all time. Yeah. 
So the, that story you told about that woman purging and that woman yeah. coming to you and seeing the pathways, yeah. everyone that's watching this is going on a path right now, and their soul's being watched, and they're being tracked, and it's being recorded. Mm. And when you get to the Akashic Records, they'll say, oh, yeah, remember when you and Deb did that podcast? Mm. Remember that night when you did that unbelievable 4E and things? Mm. That was written. Yeah, one of the I, I had a beautiful encounter with the Divine Father energy, and what I saw from that father was just this rapt attention and just saying, tell me more, tell me more of your story. Aww. Like, tell me more, sweetheart. And, you know, you think of fathers and so many fathers are so busy in their work and how was your day at school? And mothers can be the same, but how was your day at school? Not really paying attention, not really caring, not really listening, but that rapt attention of like, tell me, What's going on? What are you feeling? Tell me about your story, right? And just knowing that the that God, the universe, the divine father, whatever you want to call it, really cares. In love with you. Is in love with you and, and pays you full, full attention. And if you don't believe what Aubrey just said, because you're different and nobody loves you, you got to go do some therapy because God, the yeah. truth is we're all lovable. But there's a lot of people's internal dialogue that will argue with you. Yeah. The ego does not believe it's lovable. Right. And we've been conditioned to not, to really feel like we're bad, you know, in some way. So, the original sin. I know. That we're born bad. This is the entrance of my new repent. book, is the design faults. Like, that's one of the biggest design faults. Why wouldn't the internal dialogue go, you look so good, you're doing so good, I'm so proud of you. Like, what if the internal dialogue was built on the operating system with a positive entrance to your day by your own soul talking to you. This is like, I make this shit up. But anyways, wouldn't it be amazing if the, the operating system is was different? And it's coming soon. The kids that are being born now, there are babies coming in who are awake and they're kind and they're teaching us and they're all over this planet. Yeah, that... You know, that's one of the chapters of my new book that I'm working on that'll hopefully be out December 13th. But that is- it's About to, the children. About, no, about how to retrain that voice. So right now we all know the voice, but we, all, we always call it the judge or the inner critic right. because that's all it does. Right. But the function of it is a, is a coach. It's here to coach us. And if we actually change its fundamental operating system, like an actual coach, there's coaches that we've had that all they do is criticize and it's all punishment, it's all running suicides yeah. or fucking right. sprints and it's all, it's, all being, it's all humiliation, it's all fear. And I had one of those coaches, he's an asshole. And, you know, but, and then my coach though, was also the biggest asshole of them all, right? Like the hardest on me, so, so, so hard. And so when you have such a harsh critic that punishes you, then just like if you have an overly harsh parent that punishes you too much, you start to be dishonest. Absorb it, yeah. You, well, you absorb it and then that becomes your own inner voice, but then you start to be dishonest to your parent because you don't want to get in trouble. Right. You don't want to, so you come up with a bunch of excuses. So, so many people are coming up with excuses and they're not actually being honest with themselves because they have such a harsh critic and a judge that they actually are always justifying their actions and they're not actually saying like, oh yeah, that was fucked up because they're going to get punished so severely that they can't admit that right. they fucked up. And so, but if you actually change that voice to be like, all right, it's okay. You can do better and you'll learn and you'll get back up and I love you and keep going you're always gonna fall and get back up so beautiful you know so to like take the voice of the mother of compassion and yeah and take the voice of the father and allow that to be the coach allow that to be the voice it's constantly feeding you that That's different the different information it's a it's a really really important practice yeah and that is what astrology is in essence is giving you back permission to see yourself through the eyes of love like right. you're a double pisces of course you're a poet like, why would you be self-conscious that you cry? Tell the kid, the little kid, you're allowed to cry. And the kid goes, as he grows up, wow, totally comfortable in his emotional body. So his internal dialogue's different. But you can be a new parent. You can parent yourself. That's what astrology is. I feel like I'm a big, giant mom. Yeah. That's what I feel like. Yeah. Like, I really feel like that if I could just tell everyone just what you said, that you're not a mistake. No one pushed you on the bus. You wanted to come here. This was a volunteer position. You were so excited to be here that there's 8 billion people standing in line going, pick me, pick me. And then they picked your little kid coming out of you or you you yourself came out with that excitement. And then you get down here, you're like, wait, what? 
but did I give me some medicine? I can't remember yeah, the thing. Yeah, yeah. And so the memory is a big part of what astrology is for, activating the memory of the remembrance. Like, oh, I'm a Gemini. I came here to talk this life. Why am I self conscious? Yeah. I write that in my new book. I was self conscious that I talked. Sure. So I stopped talking. Then I had to reinvent myself and go, hold on, we're just like you yesterday. Like, how, where's my authentic voice I left behind? Mm. And then I gave myself back to and look at me. Here we are talking yeah. and talking. To just you know, circle back a little bit on, on this universe. And my teacher, Mark Gaffney, s says something beautiful. And the day of your birth is the day that God decided that it couldn't live without you. Oh, that's it's so It's the day beautiful. that God decided, I just can't live without you, sweetheart. I can't live without you. Oh. You know, and like, if we really believe that from the start and we started telling our kids is like, and on every birthday is like, remember son, remember, remember daughter, this was the day that God or goddess decided that they couldn't live without you. And that your story, your story is part of the infinite tapestry mm -hmm. of all of life and your unique story. You don't have to, you're not supposed to follow no, anyone no, else's weirder, story. Weirder the better. Your, chunky, your, chunky, yeah, chunky, chunky, your be unique funny. story. You're here to be unique. Your DNA is unique. Your retinas, your fingerprints, your soul, everything. It's all unique. God was having a party on that day when they made you. <laughs> they were like, we got a good one here. Look at this chart. This is the coolest chart. This guy's going to come down there and be a poet, and he's going to be able to get shit done, and he's got this amazing access to the other worlds and relationship. Wow. That's what he said. She. Yeah. They were just sitting there together. Yeah. It's a great chart. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you. Deb. I feel that's very what I, I really see in so many charts the divine nature that you're describing that isn't understood because we don't have a language. Right. How do you distinguish? Some people aren't able to talk and they're nonverbal and they're really deeply quiet and at peace, but they feel self-conscious because they don't think they have anything to say. That's not true. That's mm -hmm. right there on the chart. Mm -hmm. Some people are athletic prowess. They're unbelievably physical. And some people are sitting down writing books for hours in a room and not moving. That's what they're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. So the judgments and the non-comparison and being able to celebrate God, see through God's eyes, that's my job. Yeah. Can you believe that they pay me to look at people's psyches and souls and describe to them what God was thinking? Right. That's my job. Yeah, how cool. And I teach other people. I have a whole slew of astrologers I've trained that are on my website that I do this game called matchmaking where you send me your chart and I go, oh, you would do good with this person. And then they go off to that person. That's cool. I know I'm a matchmaker. That's too. cool. <laughs> I, know, it's a, I made the job up. <laughs> yeah. So one aspect of astrology that I haven't gotten too much into, but is the things that are happening as like in the collective. So your birth chart interacts with whatever kind of collective phenomenon is going on. So as even if you're a Pisces, if you're entering into Leo season or something. So what is the effect of all of the different cycles as each individual? Small question. Yeah, small yeah, 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 yeah. So let's just start with you. When I sat down, the first thing I said is Saturn's in Pisces. It's going to be there for another year. Once every 30 years, Saturn goes into Pisces. So you personally, I can say you're in a very challenging time. Saturn's asking mm -hmm. you to get disciplined. It's ask, It's a very unusual moment. So there's you. Now you're asking about the collective. Mm -hmm. So eclipses just occurred. And during eclipses, they always come in full or new moons, and they come in sandwiches. There's two of them. And during those eclipses between the two, it's an intense moment. In 1909, Einstein found relativity on an eclipse. It was marked down. It's, it's a typically a moment in time where something happens that's really unusual, and you pay attention. So People don't really know how to use eclipses. It's an opportunity to put a flag in the sand and go, this is the era that I'm going to da-da-da-da-da-da. Most people just say, oh, there's an eclipse and we're all staring at the sky. It's so funny to me. Like, let's just all stare at the sky and we're so impressed because it's so cool. But what does it mean, said the Gemini? Right. So right. during the eclipses, these last two is all about relationship about the relationship with self and the other. It's, it's this conversation you have, Libra Aries. How much am I myself and holding my own individuality? And how much do I want to accommodate and please the other and stay in the romance without losing myself? So this has been a song the last, let's say in the last three or four months. And there's a decision in there if someone wanted to use the eclipse. I tend to leave it to other astrologers on YouTube and on Instagram and on TikTok to talk about these trends because I get bored. At a certain point, they're talking, I'm like, honestly, I understand this shit, but I'm not that interested. Don't tell anyone. Did I get in trouble? <laughs> but but so I tend to do very short. If you go and see my Instagram or my um, TikToks, they're just that day. You know, my whole thing is, if we're being honest, after this podcast is over, how much are they going to remember? 
Hmm. Oh, wow, Deborah had a baby because she was on mushrooms? Oh, wow, did you hear that story? They had this encounter together, and he finally talked about his drugs or something, whatever that's called, the medicine, don't call hmm. it drugs. Um, these are the things they're going to remember after this is over. So too much information, and my mind goes, vroom, vroom. like I kind of get confused. So I do practical astrology. Yes, I'm interested that there were eclipses, and I certainly paid attention and something really happened for me. And I'm more interested in you studying your chart and the rhythms of the week and staying in the flow and getting these elements into your system balanced. And then once that happens, if you want to come study with me, I have a school. Yeah, yeah but yeah. so I'm not abstraction and going off into high intellectuals, not my strong suit. I have the gift, but mostly, mostly I'm an embodiment person that wants to make sure we're not full of shit. I spend a lot of time in life sniffing people and saying, are they full of shit? And they look me in the eyes and I can tell real quick. Mm -hmm. And so do you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This idea of repairing. So during the eclipse, I was with uh, a brother, Matthias De Stefano, who's this wild, yes. mystic, channeling, you know, magnificent, magnificent being. And he really gave me a, he gave me a very clear assignment and the very clear, he, he like put his staff, he had a staff and he puts a staff down and he smashes it down right next to him. And, and, uh, and everybody just kind of looking around. I knew I could feel that he was calling me. I was sitting in the back, just kind of relaxed right at the eclipse. And then I go sit down there and he goes, finally. And I was like, all right, man, I get it. You know, like, sorry, I didn't jump to it, but I wasn't, you weren't exactly clear. You just put your staff on the ground. And then he's like, you, you have to repair the story of Cain and Abel, the two brothers who couldn't get along. And you have to, you know, repair the union between the lovers. And he's like, he gave me that specific, which is all about relationship. Right? Welcome to Saturn and Libra. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And I was, I was like, all right, well, okay, that's a big, that's a big ask to repair wow. Cain and Abel and repair the, repair the lovers. But yeah, it was like. That makes total sense. It does. It makes a lot of sense. And you heard it, and I'm sure you're applying it, and then yeah. I showed up. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> synchronicity. It's what For you sure. specialize in. And people watching this, there's lots of synchronicity everywhere in the world. Do we notice it? Good question. And do we listen? Better question. But do we apply? Like, will my 4E yesterday actually affect your life? I want to hear. I've got your text number now. Yeah, totally. Well, and that's, so I texted Vi, you know, after, after it was over, and she's like, how was your session? And I go... Well, it will it will radically change my life if I allow it to. Bingo. It will radically change my life if I allow it to. And I could just go, oh, that was a cool session. and Or I could take the lessons and I could actually fucking do it and then, then say, no, that session changed my life. Mm. And I made the choices to make mm -hmm. sure that it changed my life because it's just a session unless I actually follow yes, through. Yes, and be patient. You're in exact Saturn on Mars today. It's not an easy moment. This is why your body's been giving you a little challenge. Sure. It's really important to take your time. And that's part of our conversation yesterday is pace. Mm -hmm. You get the insight, then you wait, then you wait, then you can't stop because it's so clear. If everyone would just slow down, I don't understand, because I, I was a speed freak, let's be honest, and I still have tendencies on my electric bike, but I've learned making love slower, eating slower, smelling the flowers, walking slower, totally different experience. Yeah. I don't know why the human body is built to be anxious and built for high strung energy. I keep asking myself. Do you think it's because just collectively there's so much stimulus totally. that we've gotten into this kind of frenetic yes. pace? Can you hear? I mean, right now, 5G, we've got cameras on. There's high voltage energy. I'm Like, we have to admit that when we grew up, when I grew up, there wasn't all this stuff. Right. There was quiet. Right. So we're at a different frequency, and therefore we have to become conscious of how do we meditate, how do we medicinalize the collective angst? If I'm a leader as an elder, and I invite everyone to, that's watching this to think, maybe you're a, an elder and didn't know it. Maybe, you, maybe you're drawn to Aubrey because you love this wisdom so much it resonates in the deepest parts of your recesses. If that's true, you may be an elder. And if you're an elder, that means you got a job. Mm -hmm. And what is the job of the elder? To prepare the ones in front and behind with security and safety to say, I got you. Mm -hmm. we're, we're safe. Don't worry. That was one of my trips on my, we won't go into that one, but I did get a very loud message many, many years ago that I'm safe. Mm. And once I put that in my body and started breathing it, life got so different. Yeah. Can you imagine everyone think about that? Are you safe? And are you probably feel safe? Well, I do because actually I'm, I'm comfortable 
with death. It's in your voice. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm very. I'm actually comfortable with death. That's because the biggest. I, and and when you're comfortable with death, then you know you're what comfortable. You got to lose? Exactly, you're comfortable. <laughs> and I love life. I don't crave it. And this is again. Today is a good day to die. Nake nula waung is. You know, I'm ready for whatever's next. It's a. It's a comfort because I know the continuity of consciousness. I know that. I know that I'll take many forms over e the eons and eons of iterations of this of this soul's the soul's purpose and the the cosmic school that I'm in, and so there that's what ultimately gives me the comfort, and that's also what I think was a big wake up call during COVID because and during the pandemic everybody was like now having to confront. Totally. Oh shit! Like death is now pressing in closer, and we're not able to look away and pretend that this isn't something that can reach all of us. And it, it will really reach all of us. Yeah, exactly. And it, it really breaks my heart seeing how instead of like you know metabolizing and digesting this and allowing this shock of the shock of death to like metabolize and to move beyond it, some people are still and will probably forever wear a mask everywhere they go for the rest of their life. And because the fear just reached them and they haven't had the elders to help guide them through and say, Everyone it's is okay. wearing a mask, just so you know. Everyone's wearing a mask. And until we get to the 13th sign and get out from behind that cute little face of yours, everyone's wearing a mask. Yeah. It takes a lot of courage to admit and be vulnerable. This existence for me, I don't know about you, but I find it very painful. I'm not good at being human. Mm. This is not my specialty. Yeah, I, I fake that. it. And I do a really good job because I've got a mission and I know who I work for and I want to go home and say job well done and I can nod my Amen. head. Yes. Amen. But in the meantime, being here, I wear a mask from time to time in order to keep this place feeling comfortable because I find the human condition mean. It mm. hurts me. Mm. And I hate the feeling of cold winds where your heart's not feeling safe and you don't know who your people are. We don't know that because you're so community bound as I am, but there's a lot of people listening to this who spend way too much time alone. Right. And they don't feel connected, right. mostly to themselves and their own chart. Right. Yeah, I mean, when when that moment, like so much wisdom is about bringing death close. You know, memento mori, probably arguably the most famous stoic saying you know remember your death like, i love it like, so much remember your death like remember remember that you're going to die and the bushido you have a, you have a samurai over your right shoulder right there and the bushido code like the first lesson is the same thing is like remember you're going to die and when you bring in carlos castaneda the you know from don juan the toltec lineage is My favorite. death is the wisest advisor that a warrior has yes when you think that all is lost, you ask your death, and your death will say, no, I have not touched you yet, you're still alive. And, you know, so like bringing death close actually is the liberation to allow you to feel safe in any in any circumstance. It's easy for you to say, because you're an old soul who's made the transition. There's a lot of people in just the smallest ways, letting go, feeling safe, being able to not be in a relationship that doesn't work because they're scared of death, of the relationship there you can't imagine how prevalent this yeah, is a very this is attachment. a symbol of your evolution and which is why we're sitting here because you've done death you're friends with it mm -hmm. i am the same but i did a research project i studied with two rabbis about death and dying and i sat in the room and i said to everyone we were studying for years together and i said raise your hand if you're afraid of your death and half the room raised their hand tentatively and then i said raise your hand if you can't wait and the other half raised their hand and i said this is what life is like half the people can't stand the thought of their death my neighbor and the other half are secretly trying to figure out how to get out of here. Right. And do it with a clean slate so that you finish here with the, everything checked off before you go. Right. That's a very interesting conversation. Yeah. And and a part of Scorpio. really- Scorpio. A part of, part of, yeah, I want to hear more about that. A part of it is actually living so fully that when you cross the threshold, you can look back and say, oh yeah, I really lived. You know, like I tasted the food, I kissed the lover, I stood for what I believed in, I laughed, I danced, I felt I the lived, cold water, I, exactly. I saw the stars at night, I drank the salt water, I yeah, drank the wine, I exactly had like, the a, hot like a bread. real Sufi. Mm, yeah, this like place makes Sufi. me so excited. Tell me about Scorpios. So Scorpios, everybody sees Scorpio and they're like, "Ooh, you like to fuck." <laughs> And that's so unfair. <laughs> I know that makes me so mad. That's what my books. I wanted to like just distill and then dismiss all of this. 
It's not fear. Scorpio is everything you just said. The short version is it's the highest sign to get us out of the liberation, to get us into liberation of the ego. So Scorpio, while it's considered sex is a cheap way of putting it, sex is a small death, orgasm is the release of the ego. Scorpio has a huge appetite to figure out how to get out of here. They're really desperate. If they have a relationship with very much being present, everything you said, they eat this life alive and they're not afraid of their death at the highest. At the lowest level, they're very manipulative and they're scaredy cats and they sting. And it's a longer conversation. I have a short video. You probably haven't seen them yet on YouTube. I have. I have. Lilana showed me. They're Where hilarious. I act out the Scorpio part and I have 8 million views. It's embarrassing. I was 12 <laughs> people within five minutes each and everyone got to see me act like a schizophrenic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it worked. Yeah. I didn't really know it was going to get so popular, but that you can watch all of them. And so the short answer is that's one flavor of the 12 that deals with not just sex, but the deep desire to face death and be real and be honest and not be wobbly. Like they, they're they very steady at their high level, at their low level, they're mean because mm -hmm. they're so pissed off at this place and they are not uninhibited to let you know that what you did pissed them off. You know, they have that quality. So mm. You know, when people have sex, did it feel good? Did it hurt? I don't know. The sounds are always so revealing. Like, are they liking that thing or does it hurt? That's what Scorpio's like. Right, right. How come they're making those sounds? That's very Scorpio. I can't determine whether this feels good or this hurts. But if the kids were listening, they'd be going, Mom, are you okay? Yeah. That's so funny. How, that, that is funny. So how much, you know, it seems like a lot of a lot of this is about my, you know, sun sign and then but there's so much more complexity in the sign. So like, if you're just starting out, like we all know, we all know our, our sun sign, right? Like everybody knows that it's part of a normal conversation. You can't get her anywhere around there without actually sharing that part. It's been around for 4,000 years. Yeah, it's been around a long time. Where do you, where do you like to go next? So like for like to a- To the moon. To the moon? Yeah, okay. the sun and the moon are best friends. The moon's your inner world. Yours is in Sag. You're, it's humor. It's a philosopher. It's the seeker. It's the athlete. It's the one that gets off on being full of chi. The moon tells us your emotional nature. It's up at night. So the sun is your ego up during the day, then the moon takes you in. And then the third category, which is the most important, is your time of birth, and that describes your rising sign. And yours is Pisces. So you're, the rising sign or the ascendant is what you're rising into. It's your higher self. And it's based on the moment of your birth. So the fact that you're rising and your sun are the same is why you're so Pisces. <laughs> right. You're a double Pisces. So those three influences, that's how everyone calls the three pillars. I get kind of pissed off. Here we go. Because astrology can be cheap. Like, oh, my sun, moon, and rising, you know nothing. <laughs> I mean, you know enough to be dangerous. You're talking about it's not useless. Right. But actually learning the science and massaging it and getting to know it requires study. This is ancient science. Right. Because so much is was revealed when you were talking about where my Mercury was and where my, you know, my Venus at the zero degree. And there was exactly. so much that got really, ding, really ding, ding. interesting. And that's what got me on board ultimately was, yeah, all right, there's some, you know, double power. Right, there's some things about this that make sense. But then as we got it was deeper, so fun watching you. as we got deeper, it was like, oh, this is getting juicier and more interesting and, and more complex. So that requires study. And we have a school and twice a year in September and January, your wife just did it. We have a level six weeks, 10 people in a room and you study your chart. Mm -hmm. So I teach people in very simple English. This is what Aaron did. Aaron was a brilliant, one of my best students I've ever had. Yeah. He learned yeah, it so he's, quick. He's really, he's he really learned gifted. it as fast as I could talk. And then he did a tattoo on his arm. It was cute. Um, the point of the story is you have to study it and be careful who you study with. And you will begin to collect information. There's lots of information, but the actual, I call it applied astrology at our school to make it useful. Right. So you can go study it and there's no end in sight. I mean, I am such an astrology addict. I just have to admit that you want to ask me, are you addicted? Yes. I'm addicted to it. I never get bored. Every time chart I see, I'm like, Wow, that makes so much sense. And it never seems to not fascinate me. Yeah. One of the things, one of the reasons why I particularly didn't believe in the rising sign of, uh, of, your, of the chart was because of my own story with my mom. So my mom was in labor for a ridiculous amount of time. And she was in labor all the way through the night and pushing and pushing and pushing. But actually her the the bones were actually too narrow for me to cross right so and the doctor was unavailable until the morning he was sleeping so they couldn't do anything wow. about it so i was actually like if if the doctor picked up the phone i would have been born you know eight hours earlier but he didn't but he didn't 
And then, so I was like, well, that's fucking random. Like, why does this, but then I think of the synchronicities of the world and like, and the mystery just saying, oh no, no, not yet. It's not time for this soul. You know, like stay asleep, doctor, whoever the fuck you were, <laughs> you know, and like pick up the phone now. And so then I start to think of like all of these crazy synchronicities that I've had in my own life and all of the ways that the mystery has, and or what Matthias calls the weaver has weaved things. And then I, and then I, now I look at it and go, oh yeah, that was always supposed to be that way. It wasn't an accident that I was born when the doctor woke up and picked up his phone. Totally, it, totally. And it gets better. I didn't tell you this. Sun and Pisces, Moon and Sag was the same chart that Einstein had. No and pressure. he studied time and he studied time his whole life uh -huh. and he studied synchronicity and he took science. Look what he did. He yeah. pioneered our notion of science and relativity and time by his, sag his, score his Pisces, his Pisces would hold two marbles in his hand and right before he fell asleep and dropped the marbles, he'd start to work. He would go into that Pisces dream state. Yeah, that hypnagogic didn't use medicine, state. Yeah. But he, and then his moon in Sag was such a philosopher that he was quoted to say, in my distaste for authority, God made me one. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> he was such a rebellious guy. Right. He was like, don't do that to me. I don't want to be authority. And then he became one, similar right, to you. Right, right. That makes sense. So interesting that you're both sun and Pisces, moon and Sag. Yeah. And that you both have this pioneering nature to go into a philosophical angle and then bring it back down. Mm -hmm. That's what he did too. What is? What do you find? Do you feel like there's a you know, a re, like an active resistance from this materialist, reductionist, empiricist, rationalist world that just really doesn't want to believe in this because it forces them to believe in a higher power that they don't want to believe in? Is yes. that... That's exactly right. That's why medicine is so important. The whole right. zeitgeist is opening up to realizing why would we keep ourselves addicted to a limited mind that sees in such small quarters and cannot open up the expanse to understanding the magic realm? Why would we do that? It's so boring. So now our society has been shmoo and astrology has gotten so popular. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's coming out now. And, so, and part of that is your work. Part of it is opening up people and saying, just consider what you can't let your mind understand. What does medicine do? It shuts off your left brain. That's it. We're going to talk to your right brain. We're going to give you directions and hope you'll listen. Yeah. There are, are there other like competing schools of astrology from different yes, other sides yes. that's, that are like arguing with each other yes, and trying yes. to establish themselves as the dominant? It's Vedic map. astrology. In Vedic astrology, you would be a Aquarius. So wow. there's a whole other system and it's ancient. It's it's from the Eastern world, from India, and it's got great value for prediction, but it's completely different. And yes, they argue. Welcome to planet Earth. Everyone <laughs> seems to have a fight about something. And then there's systems. I love all the stuff that's coming out with the human design and being able to understand the Enneagram and being able to study numerology. And then we have Richard who's doing the gene keys and right. all of the stuff is our appetite, our starving appetite. Do you see me? Do you like me? How am I different? And can you remind me why I signed up? So all of those are tools to help you remember, what did I sign up for? Mm -hmm. And I just say, study them all. But choose one and go deep. I'm that person. Mastery comes with repetition. Right. And it takes many, many years. If I told you how long I've been doing this, it's crazy. And it came in a dream. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's such a valuable thing because oftentimes we'll just learn a little bit. We'll be attracted to the little bit of superficial knowledge we can get, but the mastery goes deep. You know, Bruce Lee's quote, I fear not the man who knows a thousand kicks. I fear the man who's practiced one kick 10,000 times. Bingo. You know, like it's like, that's where mastery is. It's like the depth, the depth. It's is actually... repetition and it's routine and it's earth people and not everyone has the gift and they're not all supposed to in this life, but it seems obvious that I had to do astrology from the very beginning and I don't know. I think they put a drug in my head that said, you will love this till the end because it never gets boring. I'm like, is this going to wear off soon? Because mm. I've never not been fascinated. Yeah. It is a funny thing. I do wonder about that. Like, do I have something in my blood that's different? Is Do you see people who decide that they just want to, abs they see this and then they like just say like, I'm going to go fucking totally different way. Is there like a Good rebel nature? That. Yeah, it's. It I mean, seems they don't like... come to see me if they're going to do that. They're usually people that aren't interested in astrology and they're resisting right. their character and they're putting a square hole in a round circle and it's uncomfortable. They're not coming for an astrology. So it's, it's, so it's almost like there's like a 
there's like a wind that's really kind of blowing you towards these different pathways and you can try and resist it, but it's just going to be headwind. The question you have to ask and you and I have this in spades is how much do you trust that you're here to serve God? If you know your purpose at the end is going to be in a room face to face with your team and they're going to say to you, "Uh uh-oh, we noticed what you were doing. And by the way, try again. Mm. Or if you finish this movie and they go, good job, I we really saw your effort, and boy, did it serve a lot of people, come with us. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. Oh, this has been my pleasure. I mean, when I saw your chart at first, I was like, I don't know. I don't really understand Pisces, but I've learned so much about Pisces from you. It's real. I've learned so much in the last two days. Yeah, and yeah. I've learned so much about myself, too. You know, and I tried to... I was trying to write a book called Master Your Mind, and ultimately I got to 70,000 words three times and failed because I really realized that I couldn't actually (laughs) disambiguate the mind from everything else that exists. So I basically was trying to write a book called Master the Universe. And uh, so double Pisces, too big, too big. Yeah, that I had to 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 scale it down, down. scale it down, scale it down, get really practical and tactical. Well, that's what I do with astrology. I make, I scale it down, scale it down so it's super English and people can actually understand the elements to begin with and then start to ask themselves, what did I sign up for? What was I thinking when I took on this movie? Yeah. Well, thank you, Star Mom. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's so been welcome. it's been such a gift and i look forward to keeping in touch with you and uh and letting you know how i'm doing on and my thank assignment you for promoting that i don't believe in astrology just turned into i do believe in astrology yeah totally totally I appreciate and i you know and i encourage people too, all the skeptics out there like wait till you feel it yourself you know, don't take my word for it just Bingo. allow yourself to go deep find a you know find a master and and like allow yourself to be open-minded enough to see and mm. see what resonates thank you yeah absolutely so much love to you so much love yeah and so much love to all of you thanks for tuning in everybody we love you goodbye thanks for tuning into this video make sure you hit subscribe follow me at aubrey marcus check out the aubrey marcus podcast available everywhere and leave a comment Let me know if this video resonated or what else you would like to hear from me in the future. Thank you so much.